What a special place the Hauraki Gulf is. How beautiful the Hauraki Gulf has developed and moved over the last so many years. The wonders of the Hauraki Gulf. The birds and all the mammals. And pretty much everything that's happened. It's been incredible. I just think it's a wonderful place, the Hauraki Gulf. Um, you can see it here in the map on this brochure. Here's the island of which I live in, Waiheke. But the gulf extends right up the coast and out to Little Barrier and Great Barrier. And it comes all the way down here, all the way down to Thames. It's a big area, lots of islands with lots of birds, all kinds of birds, waders. And these are just some of the birds that are seen often in the Hauraki Gulf. We have black petrels and really nice fluttering shearwaters and we've got these lovely Australasian gannets. But of course there's lots of birds and the real success story is over here at Turituri Martangi which is a real success story. Probably New Zealand's most successful um, you know, most successful um, bird sanctuary is Turituri. And uh, just up the road, up here at Goat Island, is probably one of the most successful marine reserves really you can find anywhere. So one of the most special places is that of Little Barrier Island, which is further out and it would be possibly one of the first uh, sanctuaries um, back way back in the late 1800s it was made into a sanctuary. And that was uh, quite quite something to do back in those days. And here's a, uh, a storm petrel, which has just been, it actually has just been discovered really just not many years ago. So it's very special, an endangered bird. And um, these are some of the mammals. In fact, in the Hauraki Gulf, I have heard that there's more mammals uh, and then anywhere of 25, I think, than anywhere else um, in the world with the, with the currents coming into the bay and, and from the south and north converging. Uh, I have seen penguins, I have seen um, turtles and sea snakes and quite amazing really what you would get in the Hauraki Gulf. It's just something else. So if you ever think of going sailing, yeah, come, come to the Hauraki Gulf and go around the Hauraki Gulf. Uh, but what I wanted to show you was with this book. There is this book, and the book is called Yachting the New Zealand Way by John Dyson. Now, this book is it was published back in 1966, and it's, it's a real beaut. Um, I think I got it from David's book sh Bookshop, which was in Milford. Um, I can't remember when it was, but it might have been 50 years ago. 50 years ago or, or more, here's a, a picture of a pea class coming out of the water, but this whole book um, gets into detail. A lovely moth scooting along here with Rat Island, I would call it Rat Island, just by the Harbour Bridge in Auckland. Um, it has a huge amount of information for its day. Um, uh, I won't go into it in depth, but there really is a lot of information here, and all this is kind of developed from England coming uh, of age with sailing and New Zealand falling behind. But really, um, we have our own, our own culture of sailing in New Zealand. Um, you can see a, a frostbite here, trying to leap over a little wave. And this, this particular book has got all about, you know, sailing, downward sailing, um, fascinating pictures of kites flying high, weather information setting the sails and uh, sail um, configurations. It's quite an in-depth book, tuning and trimming. Uh, it's, it's got a lot here on this book. There's a lot There's a lot to discover. Um, you can see some of these photos here. They're fascinating, really. I'll just try and zoom in. Here is a tear of a, looks like an 18-footer. Um, these these pictures are great. 
So it was a book that I got when I was, um, oh heck, must have been pretty young, 10 or so, and I cherished it and still still keep it. Here's a Ventura, um, you know, Venturi tube, a system where you could actually build in your boat. So all these systems still work today. Um, buying secondhand, painting, it goes on and on. Catamarans and trimarans. Here's a trimaran. I've had, I've got a trimaran. I love them, but there's not a great right up here on the trimaran. Uh, a little bit disappointing, maybe. Lake sailing, cruising, Beaufort's wind scale, and this this is a great book because it's got cooking and the use of charts. Um, you know, tidal differences, information that goes on and on. Um, some great. Um, people are mentioned Francis Chichester uh, the guy that went in the Gypsy Moss around the world and uh, also other famous New Zealanders that have got um, you know been to the Olympics and have got gold so it's very much a New Zealand book and then they want to get on to the America's Cup uh, naturally and then it goes into classes and this is where it gets interesting because they describe the boat and talk about it in depth here you can see it's got the link beam and sail area for each class here's a p and describing i've always remembered the uh the sail area to be 45 square feet on the p i used to have a p there's a sebo or a optimist an opti they'd call it today flying ants uh an arrow i don't know whether if everybody can remember the arrow the Z class, I had a Z class, they're great boats. Um, the Sunburst, a great family boat, that's got a great, you know, they've got a great um, history to those boats, really. The Frostbite, the Moth, the New Zealand Moth, which was quite flat, and the Restricted Moth, or the Australian Moth, I used to call that. The Cherokee, you don't often see a Cherokee today, but they're still there. Um, the Eidolong, uh, the Eidolong was designed before the World War II to suit blustery conditions off Wellington. The boats are extremely wide for stability. The class has a high standard of competition, but not large numbers. The boat is based in simple design, making home building easy. And it's just got these interesting little uh, little stories about each, car, each class in New Zealand. Here's a, a Zephyr. A mistral, dart, and there's the cherub. The cherub is uh, with the heart. Um, oh, here's the cherub with the heart. Yes, the Q class. That was quite an open class, and it was pretty, pretty hair raising sort of sailing on those Q classes. The R class. Oh, heck, I got a bit scared of the R class. I thought they were, and the javelin were too big for me when I was young. Um, these um, catamarans were quite good. In their day in the X class that was like a big a big idol on the okay dinghy which also was a very very uh you know tender boat in those days which led you into the fin uh, olympic class and the flying 15 the only boat that had the keel and um in this kind of book um the m class which was a, a pretty old boat back in uh going since 1922 they say the 18 footer very popular in New Zealand and Australia um, very very look at the size of those those sails um, yeah fantastic fantastic book Flying Dutchman to end it I, I it was a book that I actually had have kept all my life um, all about New Zealand culture New Zealand sailing you know fantastic I, you know it was the only book I think I ever had at that age, and I just loved it. I just thought some of you might be interested in seeing such a book still exists. Um, anyway, happy sailing if you're into sailing. So, hmm, good.